Hey guys, hope you are having a happy Saturday. Since it is Saturday, that means it's time for me to talk about an episode of a superhero animated series. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Batman the Animated Series episode, Laughing Fish. If you haven't seen the episode, I will be talking about what happens, so if you don't like spoilers, please run away now. And if you don't mind spoilers, or it's been a long time since you've seen the episode, then you are in luck since I will be talking about stuff that happens. The episode begins with the Joker approaching someone who works in a copyright business for a living, and he wants to copyright his own brand of fish. Somehow he has managed to poison a whole bunch of fish so that they all have his grin on their faces, and he wants to make money off of every fish that is bought that has his face on it. Well, the dude says that the law does not work that way, so the Joker threatens this man's life. If he doesn't change his mind, at midnight he will suffer. Even though the police have the man surrounded, we see that the Joker has outsmarted everyone, including Batman, and is then gunning for the next guy in line who I guess can do something about the copyright thing that the Joker wants taken care of. Batman and the police try a different approach to save number two by dressing the potential victim as Batman and Batman as the potential victim. It still doesn't work, and then Batman and Harvey Bullock separately track the Joker to his new hideout, where eventually the Joker gets away and is maybe or maybe not killed by his own pet Sharky. I've talked before about how this series likes to borrow certain elements from the comics. On Leather Wings has a scene right out of the comic book storyline year one. Be a Clown has a scene that is very reminiscent of a scene in the comic book The Dark Knight Returns. And while I could be mistaken, I'm pretty sure this is one of the first episodes to outright be based on a comic book story. The idea that the Joker threatens someone and even announces when he will get at his target, that's not a very new idea. It is featured in Steve Englehart's run on Detective Comics from the 1970s, which you can find in the very underrated, very overpriced trade paperback Strange Apparitions. It's done in the storyline The Man Who Laughs and in the Legends of the Dark Knight story Images. And while I haven't read this story, I have it on good authority that the Joker does it in his very first appearance. So it isn't a new thing at all. But even when I've seen it four times now, and it's probably been done even more than that, it's still a great premise for a story here. I will say, I think this is maybe the weakest version of this story I've ever seen. In all of the other versions I've seen, the same material has more room to play out. The Images story was twice as long as a normal single-issue comic book, The Man Who Laughs was almost three times the length of a normal single-issue, the Joker segment of Englehart's run on Detective took place over two issues, but this episode is only 20 minutes long. And I know I complain that Robin's Reckoning and Feet of Clay were way too drawn out and did not need to be two-parters, but I actually think this might have been one of the stories that could have been justified in being a two-parter. At least, since it has been a two-parter in the comics before, it would have at least made sense that this was a two-parter if that was where they wanted to take it. Specifically, there were a few things in the first half of this episode that I think would have played out better if this story had more room to breathe. Joker's first victim from the start of the episode all the way up to when Batman injects him with the anti-venom and we find out who the next victim is, that takes up a little more than one-third of the episode. Then we spend almost no time at all on the second victim, which I'm not saying that we needed to know his middle name, what his favorite color was, or what kind of car he drove, but it would have been nice to know why the Joker was going after this guy. I I get that the Joker is crazy and oftentimes there is no method to his madness, but with the first guy, even in a sick twisted sort of way, I could see why the Joker was going after him. But this second guy, did he work at the same place the first guy worked at? Did he work at a different copyright place that the Joker wanted to do copyright business with? In at least some of the stories where the Joker is announcing ahead of time who he will kill, there's less of a pattern and so it's just fine that there isn't a connection between the victims. But here, when his air quotes reason for targeting the first guy is that he won't grant Joker a copyright on Smiling Fish, then you kind of expect to think that that will be the reason for going after the second guy. To take this all back to how much time we get with this episode, in any of the comic book versions of this story, we would have had roughly the same amount of time spent with each victim so that we could at least get an idea why the Joker is going after them, or come to understand with each of them that there really is no reason. But I don't get that as much with the second victim here. A little more than the last third of the episode is kind of just a big action sequence, which is fine because there was considerably little action in the rest of the episode. But in having the first roughly two-thirds of the episode be a thriller suspense story, and the last third be Batman fighting a shark and holding his breath for way longer than humanly possible, it almost becomes apparent that the first half of the episode wasn't even important. You could have cut off the part with the Joker trying to get the copyright, and pasted any story where Joker is causing shenanigans, and then wrap it up with him trying to have a shark eat Batman and Bullock. 
I'm not even trying to be mean to the episode. Far from it, actually. I really liked the episode. Not only did I like it, but I was laughing out loud at several lines the Joker had. And that's pretty unusual, since this show usually isn't setting out to be quite as comical as I felt this episode was in places. So no, I'm not trying to be overly critical or anything like that. But I do feel like the last bit of the episode is almost an entirely different kind of episode than the rest of the episode. Not even better or worse, just a different kind of episode. Not much more to say about this episode other than I really hate Harley Quinn, guys. I never used to have any kind of opinion on her one way or another, but there's just something about her that is incredibly annoying that makes me wish she was not in these stories. I think part of it, but not all of it, stems from the fact that very rarely does she actually serve a purpose in the story. She's usually just someone for the Joker to talk to, which, in this episode, he already has two henchmen, and then there's Batman, Bullock, and the first victim guy. Anything Harley could be here for, someone else is already doing. But she's not a huge part of the episode, so I don't have to spend much time talking about her. Oh, and I like that while Harvey Bullock still doesn't like the Batman, he's not so stubborn that he can't recognize that the Batman is still a good dude. Some other show might have ignored that Harvey and Batman are more or less okay with each other, and I'm glad this episode did not choose to ignore that bit of character growth for both of them. Overall, I like this episode, and the biggest thing I complained about, it not having enough room to tell its story, is really a testament to the episode itself, since I wanted to see more of it. What did you guys think of this episode? Like it? Hate it? What did you think of my review? Like it or hate it? please leave feedback and I will do my best to use your comments to improve my channel in the future. And if you did like this video, next week I'll be talking about an episode of Batman Beyond. And the week after that, I'll be talking about another episode of Batman the Animated Series. Until then, be sure to come back throughout the week to see what else I will be reviewing. In the meantime, have a great rest of the day.